Thank you so much, Nandini, for joining this masterclass of cracking CA campus placements. I'm sure like most of the people are going to get benefited by your entire journey and they're going to get benefited by your answers, which you'll give in the mock interview, which we'll just have in the next few minutes. Yeah, I look forward to the same. I hope that this session would be very insightful. Yes, absolutely. So thank you so much. So Nandini, I'll be the interviewer and you will be the interviewee. Although I have not achieved uh, so much in my life, I will interview you. But at least this is a mock interview. So I'll just take your interview for the benefit of students. Yeah, sure. Perfect. So let's get started. Yes. All right. So thank you so much, Nandini, uh, for the interview. How are you doing? Hope all things are good. Yes, everything is great. Uh, I hope that you are also good. Perfect. We are also very good. Thank you so much for asking. So tell us more about yourself. What have you done in the past? What are you doing right now? And you know, like, uh, what are some projects you have worked in the past so that we can have an understanding about you as a person? So I'm a chartered accountant qualified in July 2021. I'm a national record holder for being youngest chartered accountant with All India Rank 1. And my record has been certified by India Book of Records. I did my three years of article shift from PwC in the field of assurance. So in the assurance, uh, in the assurance line of service, I have worked across non-audit assurance engagements and audit assurance engagements. In audit assurance engagements, I have worked uh, in the statutory audits, forensic audits, tax audit, and the group reporting assignments. Under statutory audits, I have worked upon key areas like uh, auditing the key streams of revenue, expenses, and the payroll part. And you know, at the time, uh, India's 116, which is leases, was recently launched. And I had helped like two or three clients to build India's 116 model right from the scratch, especially when clients were having like 20 to 25 leases. During my first year of articleship at PwC, I was rewarded with Client Appreciation Award, wherein client appreciated me over the email marking my senior partner for handling the tax audit throughout the week single-handedly, that to when statutory audit was not completed. I mean, at the time, numbers were not freezed, and it was a very difficult task to uh, actually carry on the tax audit when statutory audit is already going on. So uh, it was like one of my uh, best moments at PwC. During second year of my articleship, uh, I have worked like most of the service industry clients, like in the hospitality industry, broadcasting industry. In the second year, I was rewarded with above and beyond award for highlighting some of the internal control deficiencies in client system, which were never highlighted before. Also, I helped the client in the entire India's implementation thing because it was the first year when India's were being implemented in the client's financial system. In the non-audit assurance engagements, I have worked upon certification assignments like NBFC certification and certification of a, a chemical manufacturer company wherein we were there was a compliance, there was a regulatory requirement to certify the quantity and the quality of uh, chemicals and all the material that they were handling on a monthly basis. So yeah, that, that was about my experience at PwC. If I talk about my hobbies, uh, I love traveling to new places, reading novels, and uh, currently I'm trying my hand at guitar, although feeling miserably. Got it. Let us know once you have tried your hands on guitar as well. And that's a wonderful introduction, by the way. And that's one of the most granular introductions I have ever heard. So since you mentioned that you worked in audit assurance and engagements and all those clients, like you work with a lot of big clients as well. Wanted to ask, how do you deal with pressure and how do you deal with stress? Can you give an example of a deadline which you have met earlier in your experience at PwC? So uh, there are two things. Firstly, I always make a to-do planner for the day, wherein I also prioritize my tasks, which gives me a clear picture of like how to move throughout the entire day, even in the most stressful situation. And B, I do time boxing. So time boxing my task helps me to increase my productivity throughout the day and also remain efficient in each of the tasks I do. One example for the same would be my forensic audit experience at PwC. So in that forensic audit, I was assigned the task of uh, completing four visits of 20 properties of the client in a different city. And I was given 10 to 12 days to complete the same, which means uh, visiting... 80 times in 10 to 12 days, which requires me to visit at least seven to eight properties a day. Now, there are two ways to do it. One is you start executing. So let's say you pick five properties or eight properties you will visit in a particular day and you're just executing it. 
Second way is you take one day for planning the entire thing and then you start visiting the property from the very next day. So I took the second route. I spent one entire day for planning my route. So basically I mapped uh, what all properties are near to each other. So let's say if I'm going to sector 25, then I would see uh, what up or what all properties are near to each other so that I can complete all the properties visit which are in sector 25 or are adjacent to it, which would save me a lot of time. And you would be surprised uh, by doing this. I was actually able to complete the entire assignment two days before the deadline. So uh, I think my planning really helped me to achieve that. So I feel that uh, spending some time on planning even in the stressful situation, might make your execution easier and save your efforts. I think that's a very wonderful example. And, um, you know, like given the fact that there were almost, what, 80 properties to visit in the span of 10 to 12 days, it's a very uh, cumbersome task as well. I'm glad that you were able to complete it within eight days itself. And that's like, that's an astonishing achievement. But just talking about your strengths and weaknesses, what would you categorize as your strengths and what would you categorize as your weaknesses? On strengths part, I think A, I am a quick learner. So once uh, you tell me that uh, here is the task and you know these are the five steps to complete it, so I, I would be able to do it like uh, you have told it to me once. Also, I would be able to give you one version in a very shorter time. So like my turnaround time is quite low. B, uh, I am always motivated to achieve the quality while also uh, completing the deliverable within the deadline. On the weakness part, or I would call it as area of improvement, usually um, I feel it difficult to uh, ask for help from others. I feel bothersome. But over the time, I have realized that uh, in order to gain new skills and also to efficiently manage my time, it's okay to ask for help. Also, I feel that I welcome people to ask me for help. So it's okay if I also do the same. And to, uh, you know, improve, to overcome this weakness, I am trying to be more comfortable asking people for help. And uh, whenever, you know, I have helped someone before, it makes uh, it makes easier for me to ask for help. Got it. As you said that you are a quick learner, can you give us an example of, a, of, of an incident where you learned something very quickly in the past? Yeah, so uh, connecting it to the text audit example, you know, I just mentioned that I was appreciated by the client. So it was only a one week assignment and it was the first time for which I was doing a text audit. In my team, like there was no one at my level. I was reporting to my manager and then above my manager, there was an engagement partner. And my manager was so busy because uh, he was stuck in the statutory audit things as well. So he was not able to give me a lot of time. So he just told me a few things. Okay, uh, you just check these provisions. You can you you can read about that provision from the internet, and also you can use some of the past working papers. So just basis that information, I completed the entire audit single handedly on my own. My manager just reviewed it once, and then we uh, took it to partner. And also with partner, uh, you know, I was interacting with the partner. I was explaining him the way I have audited all the provisions, what are the different acts that apply to that particular situation, all of that. So at that time, my manager gave me a feedback that you are a quick learner because in a shorter span of time, even without much inputs, you were able to, uh, you know, put it together and present it to partner. Got it. Thanks. Thanks a lot for this answer as well. Now talking about some uh, taxation side or maybe the budget side, as you know that uh, 1st of February is coming soon. The government is going to announce the budget as well. What are your expectations from the budget and what do you think retail investors are expecting from this budget? As an individual, I would of course expect that ATC limit to be increased from 1 lakh 50,000 to you know, 3 lakhs or maybe 4 lakhs because it has been a long time now and since inflation has also been increased, so it makes sense to increase that limit secondly uh, i would expect some more startup initiatives by the government especially for the disadvantaged section of society because what what i have seen is uh, they are able to start a new business but when it comes to scaling the business they face a lot of difficulties in terms of the mentorship in terms of the uh, i would say uh, guidance or the resources from the government or maybe the private sector 
So I think the startup in initiatives by the government would really help. Third, I think that uh, the taxation structure in India could be made more simpler because uh, in the past budgets, there were two schemes, old scheme and the new scheme. And we all have seen that not many of the people have subscribed to the new scheme. So I think it would make sense to actually take out the new scheme and continue with the old scheme or maybe merge both of them with some different sort of options. So yeah, these are my expectations for the budget. Got it. And any specific sector which you are very bullish on as far as the future of Indian economy is concerned? Uh, I would be bullish on uh, renewable energy sector for which the reasons would be uh, A, there is a Paris agreement which was entered in 2015 between 196 parties, wherein all of the parties to the agreement have agreed, uh, like they have agreed to come together to reduce the carbon net emission. And uh, this has put uh, like all of the countries under international economic pressure to ca like carry out more environmental and sustainability initiatives. And because of which they are supporting a lot of startups which are coming in this business. B, uh, if we look at our G20 presidency as well, the theme is One Earth, One Family, which means government is very much focused on this climate and sustainability initiative. And for the same reason, it has been highlighted in several topics of G2023 presidency as well. So I believe that this is an indication that the sector would go up. And third, I read in a World Economic Forum report that a global circular economy has a potential to... Uh, you know, generate the economic benefits worth USD 4.5 trillion by 2030. So yeah, all these factors makes me bullish towards this sector. Got it. So I think uh, one of the key sectors you're quite excited about is like the renewable energy, which a lot of these companies like Adani Group, Aditya Birla Group, etc. They are also focusing on when it comes to implementing the green hydrogen, etc. So glad to hear about that as well. Asking a couple of generic questions towards the end of the interview, I just I just wanted to understand how do you prefer to work? Do you prefer to work independently? Are you comfortable working in a group of, let's say, five people, ten people? How are you as a person when it comes to working in a team? It actually depends. So I'm a kind of person who believes in optimum utilization of uh, everyone's resources as well as the time so let's say if it is a small uh, assignment i would prefer working independently with the project lead so that i can have a sense of end-to-end -end process like what what's going on i can interact with all stakeholders and also with my partners but if it is a, a larger assignment big assignment i would prefer working in a team of let's say seven to eight people at least so that i can learn from their skills, their expertise. And also, you know, I can understand how uh, does it feel like working in a team, uh, actually agreeing on different views, how to actually reach to a common conclusion, all of that. And I think, of course, it, it's more fun working in a team as compared to working alone. So tell me one thing, I'll give you a scenario or a situation. Tell me one thing, how would you respond? So if there's a disagreement or a conflict between you and a coworker, how would you resolve this conflict and how would you settle it like like an amicable settlement? Okay, so I has actually have, uh, happened with me in the past. So I was working with a team member and we both have like different views. And uh, our manager told us that we have to come up with a common solution. Like it cannot be different. So I just explained to her my views. My views and you know then I just try to combine each other make her feel like she is thinking on the right lines but you know if we add what whatever I am saying it would add more value to the entire answer to the entire hypothesis and by giving some examples uh, related to my thought process and also to her thought process I was able to reach to a common answer which incorporated both of her views and it was not like I dis disrespected her views or she disrespected my views. So I mean by, a, by an open discussion and uh, by actually respecting others' views, we can lead to a common conclusion and our manager also liked the answer so much. So tell me one thing, are you a result-oriented person or a process-oriented person? Like would you focus more on the outcome or would you enjoy the process and focus more on the process irrespective of the result? I am a process-oriented person and it's because of a lesson that I learned in 2017 which is uh, you can never control your results, but uh, by putting in your best efforts, you can increase the probability of something better coming to you. So I always enjoy the process. And I think uh, when I enjoy the process, the result by default becomes better. Got it. Makes sense. And uh, tell us one thing, like there are a lot of applicants who have applied. Of course, like we are very proud of your achievements, but there are people who have, who have extraordinary achievements as well. So why should we hire you? 
I feel that intelligence is nowadays hyper competitive, and most of the technical skills have now become automated. But flexibility and adaptability is something which is still valued. I mean, I was reading in a survey that flexibility and adaptability adaptability is one of the skills that are now being written in job description that is expected from a candidate. And I feel that I am very flexible and adaptable to different situation. Like in terms of the different size of the assignment, or uh, different team sizes, or be it working in different culture or in different cities. And it's because of the experience that I had in PwC by working with different clients, with different team sizes, with different managers. So that's why I feel that I am the suitable fit for this job. Got it. And uh, tell us one thing, like uh, in terms of your salary expectations, like what would you expect out of this particular role? Is there any range you have in your mind or anything broadly? So I'm expecting as per the industry standards for entry-level positions. And where do you see yourself in the next five years? Well, in the next five years, I would say it's quite uncertain, but uh, broadly, I can say that I see myself as uh, financially independent, as well as, you know, doing well in my professional career, as well as my personal life, so that, uh, you know, I'm in a leadership position, maybe in my professional career. And also on the personal side, I'm able to well manage my uh, family, my friends, give enough time to them. And also, uh, you know, I'm able to take out some time for myself. So how would you define success? Like what's your definition of success? For me, success is like uh, you dream of something. You put your efforts to achieve that and you see that coming true. I mean, it's not in terms of certain amount of money or the name or the fame. It's like dreaming for it and then achieving it. Got it. So if you, if you think that you've become famous, doesn't mean that you're successful. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Right. Got it. And, uh, you know, like this was an amazing interaction, by the way, Nandini, and uh, we've not even realized how the time has passed. So I think uh, this was one of the very uh, good interviews in terms of your confidence and all. Do you have any specific questions for us if you want to ask towards the end of the interview? Yes. Uh, so I would like to ask two things. Uh, a, like how would the career progression look like at your company? Like how can I, where can I see myself in the next five years in terms of promotion, in terms of growth opportunities? Got it. So basically talking about the growth prospects here, like it completely depends from person to person. How is the performance evaluation, how the person is performing and most importantly, how the manager is giving feedback about that particular person. So we have seen instances of people who have been promoted even in the span of one and a half to two years because they were outperforming their peers. And not only that, they were giving their best when it comes to contributing towards the organization. Since you are a part of the leadership program where you have been recruited in that particular, where you're going to get recruited in that program itself, your promotions would also happen within a span of two to three years at max. And also it depends from person to person. But uh, having said this, there are a lot of people at even senior positions today who are CXOs, like CEOs and CFOs of companies who have entered as per like who have entered in the same leadership program where you had entered. So basically like uh, they have been enjoying a lot and they have been promoted very quickly. And that's the hierarchy or maybe that's the growth prospect, which is available in our company. And having said this, you will also be mentored and groomed by these senior leaders on a monthly or a bi-monthly basis where they'll train you one-on-one -on -one and they'll help you understand where are you interested and how can you add more value to the organization. Got it. Glad to know. And secondly, uh, is there any MBA program being offered by your organization, like in terms of sponsorship? And if not MBA program, any sort of leadership program, which increases the, like, which enhances the skill of a person in terms of the leadership and all. Right. Thanks for asking this question. So there are a few programs which we again give to certain candidates whom we feel are very passionate enough about what they are doing in their life. And they definitely are contributing much more to the organization as expected. So there are some programs where, you know, like we try to encourage people to go to Harvard, Stanford or Wharton for doing some six months courses. Or even if they want to do an MBA of a two years course from US, they are very much recommended and encouraged to do that as well. Given the fact that they'll have to stay back within the company for the next five years once they come from that program itself. So we definitely encourage people to go for these programs once like we get to know about the caliber and the capability of the person. Again, having said this, it completely depends from person to person. And if we feel that this person needs international exposure at this particular age itself, which will help him groom in his career, 
uh, we think that we'll be definitely more than happy and we'll encourage that person to go and we'll also sponsor the an entire education program as well. That's great. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah. what I wanted to ask. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tandini, for your time. It was great interacting with you. We'll let you know about the results very shortly. Thanks a lot. Uh, look forward to meet you at the company. Likewise. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nandini, for your time. It was great interacting with you. I think you answered all the questions really, really well. So guys, like just a few of the things which I noted and which you also should note down is that like, firstly, whenever you're answering the questions on weaknesses, you also have to mention the areas of improvement. And that's what she said in terms of how she's able to improve the, her weakness, which she mentioned that uh, she doesn't ask help from people. So that is something which she's trying to learn. That is very important. Secondly, whenever you're asked about salary expectations, etc., which won't happen in campus placements usually because ICI comes up and these companies have a fixed CPC. But in case you're applying off campus placement to any other company, usually you should answer in terms of like as per industry standard and you're coming here for learning and experience and not for the monetary compensation. That is something which will impress the recruiter. And the third thing is that throughout the answers, if you if you have like if you would have looked at her answers itself, it was very smooth and you know, like the flow of the entire answers were very, very structured. So this shows that the thinking and articulation thoughts of the candidate are very, very strong. And that's what these recruiters are looking for. Like apart from the academic achievements which you have, they're looking for someone who can articulate their thoughts effectively, they can communicate their thoughts very nicely and structure the entire answer so that if they are going to present to the client in the future, they can talk very normally as if they are talking to a friend. So I think these are some three pointers I wanted to uh, pin down after talking to Nandini and after doing the mock interview. But yeah, like uh, let's listen from Nandini as well if she has any last message for all of you. So uh, yeah, one thing just just you know recapping my interview, I just said that most of my experience has been around working in service sector. I would not have said this line if I was working for like if I was applying for a manufacturing company. I would have tweaked it to say that I have worked uh, for some of the manufacturing clients wherein, you know, I have done so and so things. So I would say it completely depends upon the target company for which you are giving your interview. If it is a manufacturing company, then highlight the points for which or uh, like they would like you in a manufacturing company. So you can say, I know how does the entire inventory management system look like at a company or how does the entire end-to-end -end manufacturing to the sales look like you can you can you know talk about the points which would be relevant to the industry secondly uh, like uh, i would say just be confident throughout the entire interview and practice the interview before going to the final interview i would say it's, it's the perfect time to actually you know prepare for the interview read uh, read the current affairs you practice more in mock interview with your peers so that it enhances your confidence and you have structured answer to every question they can throw at you Right. I think I completely second that. And, uh, you know, like that's a wonderful point. Wherever you're going, if you're applying in a banking industry, you have to, you know, like talk something about the clients where you have worked in the past, like who are banks or maybe, you know, like if I have done statutory audit of a cooperative bank, I'll, I'll just mention more on that experience because that is what will excite the interviewer. So that is very well said. Any last message if you have Nandini for all the students like who are going to prepare for campus placements? I would say uh, read the job description carefully. You know, sometimes you might have some something in your mind that, okay, that's how the job would look like. But uh, let's say you have been selected for the for the company, for the interview, and afterwards you realize that, okay, this was not the profile I was looking for. Then, you know, it might create a disappointment, especially when you don't have any other job offer. So be very careful while applying for any company. Read the job description carefully. Also understand from the seniors, how would a typical day look like at that company? then only I would say you should, you know, apply for that or give that interview. Like in my experience, I, I didn't give the interview for which I was not keenly interested. Right. Perfect. That's a very, very valid point. Thank you so much, Nandini, for your time. It was great having you. And thank you so much, all of you, for watching this entire masterclass. I hope that we were able to add some or the other amount of value in your life. So stay tuned for amazing next masterclasses as well. And do let us know about the feedback in terms of how would you want the next master classes to be conducted and where can we improve in the future. So thank you so much once again for watching this entire master class. We'll see you in the next master class. Thank you all.